Okay, hello subscribers and non-subscribers, and welcome back to Let's Play Stellaris Star Trek New Horizons as the Terran Empire. So, this part we will probably be focused mostly on rebuilding our fleet. I will continue to bitch about the Romulan Republic and some of the crap that they're allowed to get away with, simply because they are apparently the Romulan Republic, I guess. Uh, and so, yeah. So, you know, be prepared for that, because it's going to happen. Because at this point, we literally have fuck all in terms of expansion options outside of the Klingon Cardassian Alliance, who are, yeah, somewhat similar situation compared to the Romulans, except that they apparently have less naval capacity than us. I don't know why. But yeah. So my options are kill everybody around me, or use those one slightly larger now opening to go against the Klingon Cardassian Alliance, which is basically just the Cardassians. Because the Klingons are a vassal of the Romulan Republic, and so that's, I guess, why they're not a part of the actual Klingon Cardassian Alliance. Basically, the Cardassians said we wanted a new name. I mentioned this when they were formed. I honestly think that's the case. I don't think they have any... Um, looking at their empire population, they have no Klingons at all. They are 247 Cardassian Pops within their empire. Zero Klingons in their so-called Klingon Cardassian Alliance. That's not a Klingon Cardassian Alliance, <laughs> if I do say so myself. Of course, attacking them gets me into war with the Breen, who, again, are basically the same as the Klingon Cardassian Alliance. I'm just going to call them the Cardassians. It's easier at this point because they have no Klingons. Uh, in terms of relative power, they are literally the exact same. Equivalent, inferior, superior. The only difference is that the, I guess, tech level, and maybe a little bit of the fleet power as well for the Cardassians, is better just enough to where they are overall superior, while the Breen are still equivalent overall. Oh boy, honestly, I think I should have attacked the Orions early on, but hey, you know, I tried to listen to you guys' advice. Quite frankly, I'm thinking I should have just thrown it out the window. But far too late to do that. If I had invaded the Orions much earlier, they wouldn't be a thing. And if I had destroyed them before I met anybody else, nobody would be complaining. Because as far as they know, I've always owned the Orion Free States. But because I decided to listen to you all and do the whole okay let's do it and do some colonization yes now we're in this situation i could colonize more would it really help me no not really and it would just slow the game down a shit ton more than it already is considering the amount of stars there are so yeah there's really not much i can do with things the way they are. Get rid of that. I hate that the AI is deciding to build these damn Polaric um, ion power stations. Like, why would you build those? They piss off the pops on the planet. If you're playing as the Borg, sure, I can understand building them. The Borg don't give a crap about happiness. Unless something changed. Last time I played as them, it didn't matter. But yeah, so. Okay, I need one NX class. Let's go ahead and try and save up for that. Our income has gone up by roughly 100 or so minerals a month, which is gonna help me get the destroyers built faster. Well, just everything built faster, really. We've got at least a couple of months until the Romulans inevitably decide to declare war on us. The truce expires in, what is that, April of 2265. So yeah. Um, you know what, let's get up here. Go to Mars, guys.
Oh, another faction, the pacifist faction. Ugh. Me waging wars of aggression is going to upset them. Well, there's really no other form of warfare. I want you all to realize this. I think they get pissed anyway. I think the keep the peace one disappears even if someone declares war on you, which in my opinion is a load of bull. <laughs> if somebody attacks me, it's not my fault. So don't complain to me about the fact that, oh, you're in a war. Well, yes, but I'm not the one that started it. Just the way I see it. The keep the peace modifier in, for the pacifist faction should not disappear if somebody attacks you. Or at the very least, you should not get the negative form of it. You should just get a neutral of a, oh yeah, you're in a war, we're not exactly fond of that. You should not get the minus 5% or whatever it is to faction happiness as a result of being in a war when somebody else declares it on you. That's my opinion. If I actually cared enough, I would modify it to do that, but I just don't care enough to do it. Especially since modding Solaris is a pain in the ass. Mostly because it always crashes Windows Explorer. It's one of the reasons I don't update my couple of species mods that I have all that often. I typically only touch them when a major update comes out. And even then I'll normally avoid it actually. Because I just don't care to deal with it. Okay, you know what? Screw it. There's only two. Just get rid of them. You guys will live. Okay, that's all the NXs until I decide to add more. I still need to get the Intrepids and then preferably build some more cruisers and battle cruisers. But at least our energy credits can survive being in a war now. So, you know, that's a nice thing. Yeah, the materialist faction is not pissed at us, but they could definitely stand to be happier. One of their main issues is that we are not ahead of the curve when it comes to tech level. The Borg have overwhelming fleet power, but that's just the result of the Borg having ridiculous weapons, actually. They are designed around that. Coalition game. A voiceover. It's a coalition in this case. So the Bernali, wherever the hell they are, oh, here we go, are in a coalition now called the Grand Concord with the Vaudois Supremacy. I assume this is a result of the Borg doing things. They're not a big fan of the Borg. I don't blame them. No one's a big fan of the Borg. When the board come knocking on your doorstep, you try to get the hell out of Dodge. Especially if you're not able to actually fight them. Which is the case for pretty much anybody the board is going to be fighting. The way the board are designed is that everybody around them is crap. If the board are being played by a player, you can very quickly expand. And since you assimilate people, they don't complain. when you show up or at least they eventually stop complaining once you're done conquering them T 
technically speaking, if I'm going to stick to my doubling scheme, I should have 10 NX class destroyers and 10 Intrepid class destroyers. Am I going to do that? No, probably not. The destroyers, just like the battle, or the patrol frigates, they melt. So, we might be abandoning destroyers come the TMP era once we finally end up in that. I think we'll be focusing mostly on cruisers and battle cruisers going forward. Now it's almost the end of 2265 and I'm not going to say anything but you all should know what I'm thinking. If I say it I expect it to end up happening so I'm not going to say it. It's that simple. You guys don't hate me. But you're way the fuck up there, so it doesn't matter. If you were down here, we could be friends. Maybe. Probably not. But we could try. If you were down here, we could try. But you're not down here, so we can't try. Or at least there's no point in trying. Check me there's nothing stopping me from trying. Oh yes, Mars. Oh no, you're not Mars. Whoops. Mars already has all of its stuff that I actually care to give it. These other things aren't particularly useful. I mean, maybe the Starbase crew quarters could be helpful. But I lean a little bit more towards the uh, Fleet Academy for the plus 10% uh, fire rate. Naval Supply Depot. I guess. Don't really care for that. Just go for something quick and easy to research. So we'll go for the Arbitorium. I could build deep space stations. I forget about that, but unless something's changed, they're crap for the most part. I mean, maybe something has changed and they have more slots now. But last time I built one in our Federation playthrough, they didn't do anything because they only had a single slot. They were just a Oh, I need to push my borders a little bit, but if I recall correctly, you could only build them in your borders. So the best you could do is build them on the fringe of your empire or whatever you want to call it to slightly push the borders out, but generally speaking, they were worthless. Although I do believe the devs mentioned plans to make it to where they can. Um, they can be upgraded to have multiple slots. Maybe that's already happened. Fact of the matter is, since I just haven't built them, I don't know. But that's one of the main reasons I haven't built them is because I don't know. You know, it's one of those weird things where you don't do something because you don't know. if it's worth doing. Uh, you know what? I should probably upgrade you guys as well. But I need the minerals to build cruisers, so I kind of prefer to build cruisers, if I'm honest. Because if I can get to equivalent fleet power with the Romulans, that should keep them off my back. Because I don't know if the AI takes into account the rest of its coalition when it comes to declaring a war. I don't think it does, or at least I don't think it weights it very heavily if it does. So if I can build a bunch of battle cruisers and cruisers to keep the Romulans off my back, that would be wonderful. And this plus 10% to fire rate for all ships built at the Mars star base will be helpful. At least to a degree. It's 10%. Is it really going to change things a lot? Probably not. Actually, I don't know. The ex My battle crews are sitting at a plus 60% fire rate already. 55% on the NX refits. Same with the Connies. Same with the Intrepids. And the NX. 
What is that's giving you guys all that fire rate though? I guess just the I guess it's just the ship class is giving a boost to fire rate itself, which is a interesting way of going about adding fire rate. Having it being tied to ship class for the most part with a couple of options to increase it elsewhere. But yeah, it's generally speaking done it seems by ship class now one thing i'm curious have the devs made eps relay 3 worthwhile no it is still a power usage of 20 with a plus four percent to weapons damage making it to where it actually decreases your overall damage because it decreases your excess power too much if they fix that it'll be useful it really would be Decreased power usage or up the weapons damage bonus. Either of the two will work. You just need to find a balanced number, but there's no reason to use EPS Relay 3 over EPS Relay 2. It's probably one of the reasons the game keeps recommending that I use EPS Relay 2. It's also why now I've given in to sticking with what the game recommends because as it turns out at least in terms of fleet power it is right now here's where we have the situation battle cruisers if we actually look at this so battle cruisers have we'll just say roughly half the hull of a cruiser They have roughly half the shields. They are more expensive maintenance wise. They don't increase military power by a ton. So I have to say I'm inclined to go with building more NX refits and constitutions. If I'm completely honest with you all. But which is better? The Connies or the NX? In terms of fleet power, the NX is better. And I think they also typically seem to survive longer. But in terms of maintenance, the Connies are better. What's the difference in the way they're designed? Okay, the Constitution only has a single heavy, while the NX has two heavies. So the NX, once the shields are down, they'll wreck the enemy fleet. The colonies are better at knocking down the enemy shields though because they don't have the minus 50% shield damage on all their weapons because they're not equipped solely with assault phasers. But I still technically need a little bit of... Um, actually, yeah, yeah, I still need a little bit of both with electronics countermeasures on the NX refit and the aceton assimilator on the constitution. So I think I'll just, yeah, let's build another NX, save up, build another Connie. We'll stick with our sort of having an equal number of NX and constitutions. You're an equivalent still. You are superior. I assume they're superior mostly because of their fleet power and then also just the fact that they have a shit ton of fleets. Don't care for terraforming, don't really care for uplifting. Plus 50% to garrison health, that could be useful for keeping my planets held. How long is the part we going for? 20 minutes? <sighs> okay. We're going to try this again. Urtok, give something to my vassal. Give Rog to my vassal. Make them actually capable of doing shit. That'd be wonderful. Beta Veldona, yes please. 
Delta Leprous, yes please. Akali, yes please. Alpha Sailey. Um, let's try again giving something to the Gorn. Yeah, hopefully they'll actually do shit this time. Those are my demands. Now, the enemy's only getting a minus 16 of, to accepting a white piece as a result of relative fleet strength. In theory, that means they're not actually that powerful. Again, that's theory. We're gonna jump down and very quickly try and take Betazid out of the Beta Veladona system. In fact, I think I'm gonna focus my military down here and just hope the Ramans don't wreck too much shit up here. Oh, first space battle. And 40 Arendi, because I guess they had their transports stuck around the spaceport, so we got a little bit of war score. The amount was basically worth nothing, but, you know, we technically got some. Also, that reminds me, you know, I never gave you guys leaders. So, you know, let's do that. Who's the most research? You actually give the most research. because he heard somebody make a noise. What second? Okay, let's go and continue. First fleet is slowly going to make its way to where it needs to be. We are actually sitting at our cap for energy credits, which is a miracle to say the least. And unsurprisingly, my sectors would give me basically no minerals, but hey, you know, if I needed energy credits. <laughs> oh, Gorn, you are so screwed. You've only got 11k. The hell are you equipped with that you only got 11k light phase disruptor cannons heavy plasma disruptor cannons spatial torpedoes and light pulse wave torpedoes you just don't have a lot of ships you're gonna get wrecked by the klingons oh well you know if you got decent shields you might be able to hold out and knock out their battle cruisers if you can do that you might be able to eke by a victory but your shields aren't that great. But they are better than the Klingon shields. So I don't know. You might actually be able to do something if you can get favorable combat positions. Let's see. No, you're screwed. 1.1k spaceports. You need to put on those, the hangar bays. If you put hangar bays on them, you might be fine. But I don't think they're gonna go for you. They're probably gonna all link up with the Romulan fleet and we're gonna get like a 300,000 strong Congo line of Romulan, Klingon, Orion, and Ferengi ships. Basically like what happened last time. So, you know, again, 
I I warned you all before. Be ready to listen to me just basically bitch about the Romulan Republic. Because that was guaranteed to happen in this part. Woo! Worthless tech! Yeah! Okay, I can get better... Ooh, better haul? Or do I want to get Starbase 4? Or, excuse me, 5? This will open the door to larger ships. <coughs> Battleships. Uh, or I can make my existing ships better. But here's the thing. I'd have to upgrade the Starbases. I'd have to research battleships. I'd have to then build the battleships. So, to be completely honest with you, I'm kind of inclined to go for the better hull. Assuming it is better. Destroyers, plus 990 hull, plus 16 armor. It's a little bit better, and I still have to send the fleet home to do it, though. To do the upgrades. But yeah, you know... Well, this is great. It gets me extra naval capacity. It opens me up to get battleships, but I still have to research the battleships. I don't know how long that would take. I then have to save the minerals to build the battleships. I don't know how long that would take because I don't know how much it's going to cost. So in the grand scheme of things, both will help, but one is a more immediate help while the other is a, well, eventually it'll help you. So I'm going to go for the one that I know is going to help me in the short term. And it will still be helpful in the long term as time goes on, realistically speaking. Um, sure, you guys can become spiritualists. I really don't care. I never did. You guys can be whatever you want to be. Um... Do I have an empty... I'm going to replace you with the Galactic Research Initiative. And actually... I'm going to replace you. Well, wait. I think the university would be fine on a planetary administration. So I'm going to build you into an interstellar academy. We're doing fine on mineral or energy credits anyway. Bunch of patrol frigates. But these are the generic model patrol frigates. So they're from them annexing vassals down here. Uh, let's actually swap people around real quick. Try and get the better haul a little bit faster. Fucking Klingon Cardassian Alliance. Insulting me. They're deciding to... There's their fleet. And it's the seventh fleet. So, in theory, they have six more that are just as powerful, if not more so. So, you know, the usual. We are tracking an enemy fleet. They're going to take Retour. There's nothing I can do about that. Even if I, well, I'll finish this second time, but that plus 50% is not going to matter when they are bringing... Oh, it's only 18, actually. It might be able to survive if we're lucky. They're not bringing a huge stack like they were before. I think that's mostly because a lot of those were from their allies who have not quite arrived yet. Oh, see? Second fleet. Going to Andoria. And they're going to be jumping around on top of the spaceport, which doesn't even have hangar bays yet, so it won't do much. But Andoria can hold out for a long time. It's one of the nice things about Andoria. It can hold. They are assaulting our space force. At least the planet, not so much everything else. 
Everything else collapses. That spaceport, there's no way in hell it can survive. It's just the way it works. Oh my god, game. I get it. Jesus. I know, and there's nothing I can do about it for the most part. I've got one fleet. It's way the hell down here. So, yeah. Uh, eventually, we'll unlock text that reduce the cost of war demands, as well as the holographic naval command and naval depot that can increase fleet size even further. I need the extra fleet capacity going forward. Hope somebody's unemployed. Who? You can't be unemployed. I want you to realize this. You're sitting on a pop. Or on a tile that works. You, okay, you guys are being considered employed because the planet is being bombarded. Which, one, game. You can do a much better job of telling me that. Uh, let's just be honest about that. So, yeah. Oh, our Empress just died. I don't know what our old Empress's stats were like, but... Our enemies hurled themselves at one of our tracks. Okay, they're already going for Andoria. Construction complete. We're not going to hold, but we will... But yeah, we're not going to take any other guys with us. Uh, do they want Andoria? Please tell me no. No, none of them want to take Andoria, so... They're not going to get a ticking war score yet. God, I think we almost only had empresses. What is with us? <laughs> I mean, holy crap, people. There are males. <laughs> I mean... They're the people leading the first fleet. But yeah, I, I, again, I honestly think we've only ever had empresses. I don't think we've had a single emperor. If we did, he died quickly. And I just don't remember him. Then again, I don't normally remember who my leaders are in Stellaris because quite frankly, they're largely irrelevant. Oh shit, who's coming here? Oh shit. Are you guys coming down here as well? You are. Where can I back up to for support? You're too weak. You're not upgraded. Chai's not upgraded. AD Leonis, you're not going to be able to do it. But Gem is our best bet, I guess. for really going anywhere. Go back to Seoul. Where are you running? Okay, you're running. You're being smart running down south to get away.
See, this is a lot of bullshit that I hate about this mod sometimes, though. Okay, we're about to get the heavy beam section supposedly for whatever. Good job, you got the iron fist straight. That's helpful no matter what. You're an NX. Let's see if I can pop out a constitution. <sighs> we gotta deal with the Congo line of death shit that the Stellaris... That is still gonna be a thing. And probably more so a thing with the fact that they're gonna be adding in fleet capacities. That is apparently right now at least a hard cap rather than a soft cap. Really, Mei Ling, you had to die right then and there? You couldn't wait an extra 30 months to die? Actually, you know what? No, I think our best bet would be setting up shop around Seoul. I'm going to send you to Vega. You got two star bases around Seoul, both of which have hangar bays. Both of which will be able to help us. Uh, one second game. I want to look at this. Okay, so plasma phasers would give us ignore 75% of armor, which is actually not that bad. Uh, but it still takes forever to research anything here. Let's go for modulated phasers too. Uh, apparently the minimum damage is lower, but the max damage is higher. I'm not sure why that is the case there, but sure, game. Have weird shit like that. We are tracking an enemy fleet. Now where the hell are the Gorn keeping their fleet? There it is. Okay, they're gonna go and try and fight the Trojan Empire. Or at least a fleet that they have. Oh, uh, did that actually give me anything? Or were you lying to me when you said that that was gonna be helpful game? You know what, it's still technically a little bit of extra, so... No! Modulated phasers, game. Don't know what your problem is. I don't know why our battle cruisers didn't have the advanced engineering battle cruiser rear. They should have the entire time. I probably screwed up. So.
Is that really actually going to be for the uh, defense stations? No, it's not. I don't know why. It must only be for legit battleships, in which case it should probably be set up to require battleships to be researched. I mean, the description does say battleships, but honestly, you never know with the game. Go to Earth, do a quick upgrade. Make your battle cruisers a little bit more powerful, hopefully. We are tracking an enemy fleet. 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 We are tracking Shut up, game, Jesus. I get it. God damn. I don't need you to spam me every time they come in our sensors. This is one of those problems where you don't put... This is one of the reasons you don't decrease sensor range like the mod does. Because you will just get spammed with this shit because they will constantly be jumping in and out of sensor range as they pass by systems. Oh, you guys aren't going to finish those upgrades in time. We are tracking an enemy fleet. Look at this bullshit. Okay? Fucking Congo lines of 20k. Okay? This is a load of bull. One, the AI should not be doing it. It doesn't fucking need to do it, for one thing. Okay, it can crush me. These two fleets right here, they'd crush mine. And I'm not talking about these two 25k Romulans fleets. I'm talking this 25k and this 2.8k Tamaran Unity fleet. These two could crush my fleet. No fucking problem. Especially if they engage me out in the open. Around a starbase, sure, it might be a good idea for them to toss in this extra Romulan fleet. You don't need these down here. Okay? So, typically I don't do this. But, I just can't stand dealing with the game's crap right now. I really can't be bothered to deal with it. Okay, it's a load of bullshit that the Romulans can vassalize the Tamarian Unity, the Klingons, the Orion Free States. Okay, and none of these guys think, hey, you know, if we all get together, we might be able to defeat the Romulans. So why don't we do that? No, they're going to sit there and say, oh, yay, the Terran Empire is a bigger threat. We don't want to be independent. I'm not that big of a threat. If I do anything, I'm going to have to fight the Romulans again anyway. So, you guys gain your independence. I might beat the shit out of you in one war. But it's only one fucking war. So, yeah. I just can't be bothered to deal with the bullshit of the Romulans being able to vassalize everyone down here. Being able to have a coalition with the Morali and the Ferengi. The Klingon Empire should have been released as an independent person and then been instantly swallowed up by the Klingon Cardassian Alliance. But the mod developers apparently didn't take into account the possibility of the Klingons being a vassal. Because I'm pretty sure you are supposed to get annexed by the Klingon Cardassian Alliance when it gets formed. But somehow you being a vassal apparently ignores that from happening.
So, you know, release of 1.9 or 2.0 or whatever might be a good idea for the devs to look into finding out how the hell you make it to where a person who is already a vassal can be annexed by another empire. It probably isn't that hard, realistically speaking. Okay, your main issue is just going to be having an event secretly fire to release these guys, give them a massive opinion penalty to accepting any vassalization, and then instantly have them get swallowed up like the next day. We're talking like basically two events. One to release them, one to give them a massive opinion penalty to accepting vassalization again, and then following day, boom, swallowed up. Won't have time to do anything. Okay, you could probably use a similar event chain to what happens when a um, planet gains independence and then like within 48 hours has rejoined another empire. Which, that's an issue I have with the game itself. That planets can gain their independence and instantly join up with another empire. By becoming their vassal or say, hey, we want you to swallow up our planet. Because, you know, we just gained our independence and we haven't really had time to establish the concept of a government that can do anything. But we're just going to ignore that fact entirely. I've already paid the price. I fucking cheated to end the war because I could not be bothered to deal with it. That's something I typically don't do. I don't mind losing wars. But, you know, if I'm going to deal with this shit of the Romulans being able to vassalize everybody around me somehow, just because of the fact that I have a minus 250 opinion because, oh, I'm the Terran Empire. Well, fucking Federation better have a plus 250 opinion for being the Federation. That's the way I see it. Because it makes no sense for me. Everybody hates me just because I'm me. That's stupid. It really is. They're going to hate me anyway for conquest. Just leave it at that. And you're going to conquer. I'm sorry. There's no reason not to conquer when you play Stellaris. It is literally the easiest way to expand. Is to go around, beat the shit out of your neighbors and say, This land is my land now. If you got a problem with it, you can take it up with my ships. So, yes, if any of you feel like complaining about the fact that I use the Yes Man cheat, or Yes Man, whatever the fuck it is, to end the war, uh, just know I do not give a shit about your opinion on that. So, yes, you can have a problem with it, but it's not going to change anything at all. Now, how are our battle cruisers? Okay, now they're a little bit better at 1500 rather than the 1400 they were sitting at. Now they've got a somewhat more noticeable improvement compared to our cruisers, but honestly, I'm still generally inclined to go with the Connies and NX refits. Because they're cheaper and they have more hit points on the hull. And they have more shields. They're just all around better. They really are. There is basically no reason not to stick with those or with cruisers over battle cruisers. Naval supply depot, not exactly useful. Uh, just go for the Colonial Bureau. It's a quick thing to research, and I don't care for the other options right now because none of them seem particularly great. Replace you, regular power plant. Don't know how I missed that. 
you guys still aren't yeah you guys still have about 40 days until you finally start growing on your own I could have moved people to this world I don't care to because even if I move my people to that world they're still gonna have to I'm still gonna have to grow pop somewhere no matter what so it's easier for me to just keep it on specific planets so I'm gaining a plus 131 percent growth speed increase across five worlds this basically results in a plus it's dropped now because of the fact that more planets are growing it's now up to 11 but it was a plus 1.56 now it's a plus 0 0.62. Construction complete. Okay, I think I will end this part once we have researched the new hull. I probably won't bother with the upgrading right now, mostly because of the fact that it's going to take a while, but we'll see. I might let the upgrades go through first before ending the part, we'll see. Now, you're the only one on this planet that's particularly happy with my rule. Wait, Science Center? What do you do? Research alternatives, but you give me a lot of physics. Or, not physics, engineering. You guys are society, though. Do I have anybody who's good at engineering? Um, find me a Vulcan. I don't think we have any Vulcans on the gem. I think they're all over here. You guys are intelligent. Okay. You know what? I'm just going to replace you with the Science Center. I assume there's a society research equivalent of the Galactic Research Initiative and the Science Center. I don't know what it would do though, besides obviously produce society research, because the engineering one, or the Science Center gives me research alternatives, the Galactic Research Initiative gives research speed, so I don't know what a society equivalent could give me. I'm kind of curious now for that, but not enough to really care. Besides, it'll be a while as we find out, and actually probably never will because this will probably be one of the last parts of this series. Uh, I don't really care for you to be enslaved right away. Feel free to... Nah. Apparently you will be growing as an egalitarian right now, so screw it. Feel free to be enslaved as soon as you finish growing. Two months and then we'll have finished society. No, I'm not joining. God damn it game, quit asking. I don't need extra society research. That gave me physics or something, gladly join. There needs to be something in here to say stop asking. Because the reality is I wanted to stop asking. <sighs> yeah, no. Nothing useful there. See, we're not actual xenophobes, so. We have established a new planetary base. Um, great job, guys. You just keep going around colonizing stuff. Clinical complex, don't care. Fine, I'll go for class warfare strategy. Which, I want to note, looks more like an a constitution firing phasers so I hope we don't mean 
use, <laughs> using our starships to fire on people of various classes. Because, you know, that doesn't make much sense. Also, it looks like a TOS style. Not the JJ verse style. But it is also definitely a much higher res looking image. So I'm assuming it's probably from a fan art or something. Because it's definitely too clean and too blue and clear to have been actually an actual shot from the series. Uh, nothing else that I can really do here. I, you know what? Whoops, I could get the extra food. Again, it's one of those I don't really care for it. Damn it, you see, you do need a planetary capital. Hopefully you didn't. So the fact that you do, no matter what, means it really doesn't matter. Is there anything I can have you build that would be better? No. I don't think any of the other options here are particularly useful. So, what are you? You're a Terran, so I'd rather you not be working a mine because you're not going to do a good job or at least not as good of a job as you could though i could move this guy around you know what that's what we're gonna do we're gonna, we're gonna move these guys around you're gonna be a mining thing you're gonna go work there and you're gonna get enslaved as soon as the thing is done being built i need a place with a planetary capital you can do it So can you. I might do it on you. Yeah. I'm going to do it on Shantai. Interstellar Academy. One more month and we get the new hall. Uh, should be noted absolutely worthless I mean wonderful concept but as far as I know or at least according to the UI it's worthless I don't know maybe it actually does something useful but I want to assume it probably doesn't uh, but I don't really have any good choices here let's go for the bolstered planetary shield we won't use it but maybe it'll unlock something useful I don't think it will though Okay, it's not going to take too long, so I'll let you guys go ahead and do them. Although you're going to have to do them again a little bit once this, whatever this one is, constitution is finished. We're going from 31.7 to 32.5, so it's actually a decent little bonus. Oh, uh, let's also take a quick look at our... You must be the... No? Wait. Okay, I need to find out. Okay, you must be... Yes, okay. So you're one of the NX refits that were built recently after the... Uh, what is it? The Fleet Academy was built at Mars. Which is actually providing a decent little bonus... Yeah, that's a decent little bonus. Not a whole lot, but it's something. We're going from 1466 to 1533. A bunch of ships with that bonus? Yeah, that's going to help. Go ahead and upgrade that one thing real quick. Yeah. You got at least 50k. 
on your own. We could probably take the Ferengi in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Same with the Klingons. We could definitely do it with the Orions. Uh, definitely with the Tamar and Unity. That's probably because we crushed their fleet in the last war. We fought against them when they were still independent. The Morali we could probably beat in a one-on-one -on -one fight. It's really, honestly, it's the Romulans holding the galactic axis together. If I could have a decent, successful war against the Romulan Republic, it would basically destroy their coalition. Because the reality is they are the only ones with any real power there. I mean, the Ferengi could put up a fight, but they're not that powerful. So, yeah. It's just one of those things. Who are you fighting? You're fighting the Tholians again. Because of course you are. Everybody loves fighting the Tholians. Except me, because I can't get to them. Next part, if there is a next part, because it depends upon whether or not I'm able to squeeze in a recording prior to the release of the humanoid uh, species pack for Stellaris, and of course whether or not the save will still work properly come 1.9. It works, but there are no significant issues. We'll continue the series at least for a while longer. Um, if it works, but there are significant issues, then we might just end the series then and there. But yeah, so there might be one, maybe two more parts if I decide to try and squeeze in a double recording next time. But I don't think I will. Just due to time constraints again. But yeah, so this may or may not end up being the last part. It just depends. Let me see. What is December 7th exactly? Oh, it's a Thursday. So okay, I should be able to record one more part actually. But that'll be the last part more than likely. So, yeah, probably only one more part for you all, I'm afraid. That's just the way it's going to work. But again, that we'll see. Okay, again, it depends on whether or not the save works with 1.9. Because I don't want to roll back. I'm sick of doing the whole rolling back and staying on older versions of the game. I had to do it with EU4 because I had a series that I wanted to finish up, and it was running for quite a while come that time, but... Honestly, I just do not care a lot of the times to stay on older versions because it means I miss out on a lot of new, fun, interesting mechanics that I don't get to take advantage of when stuck on an older version. So, yeah. I don't plan to do that anymore. So even if a series ends up only being like five parts as a result of a new major update coming out for something, oh well. Uh, but if the save doesn't work with 1.9, I think I will put Star Trek New Horizons on hold until the release of Solaris 2.0. Mostly just because, yeah, I really want to play 2.0, and I'm curious to see how the devs of this mod will handle a lot of the changes being made there, namely the fact that they're doing away with pretty much anything that's not hyperdrive. So that'll be fun to see how they... How the devs of this mod go about handling that but nonetheless that's going to be it for this part i will see you all in the next part i think i will continue to build a bunch of nx refits because yeah they're just better they really are <laughs> okay i mean they're slightly worse than our battle cruisers in terms of military power but eh they have more staying power in a fight, just a result of better shields and whatnot. I don't have anything better to spend the minerals. You know what? Let's end this part by queuing up some more cruisers. Also, that reminds me of Doria. Build your star base up. I kind of forgot about that. I should have been telling you to do that for a while now. But that's going to be it for this part. I will see you all in the next part, which like I said, could end up being the last part, depending upon whether or not the save continues to work with the release of Stellaris 1.9. But until the next part, a goodbye and a farewell.